Oh, I've done today is lay here, but I should really be trying. Oh, I don't have any ideas. So, whatever. Oh, come on. I've got nothing. I just said. If I had any ideas, I'd do stuff. I don't know. <sighs> okay, fine. All right, so we all know how intimidating that blank page can be in the sketchbook, but it is so valuable to try to create at least a, almost daily practice where you are working on something in the book every day, working towards improving your skills and just getting into this great habit of always doing creative work. So I kind of recommend almost having sketchbooks for different things. You certainly don't have to. If you don't need that kind of individualized focus, then by all means, just whatever works. But this particular sketchbook for me has been um, working with watercolor because it is actually a watercolor book, nice thick heavy pages. And I have been focusing on doing watercolor portraits or um, poses, full body poses, not necessarily looking to get lifelike renderings, but just getting used to working with watercolors on this type of thing and practicing techniques and just seeing what I can do, experimenting a little bit, you know, and it's uh, because you're doing this maybe daily or at least a few a week, it's okay to have some things not be amazing. It's just a practice zone. So you could have one sketchbook dedicated to doing some color work, one dedicated to landscapes, one dedicated to anatomy. You can kind of be all over the board if that works for you too, or one at a time, or just one for everything. However it works, just try to have some kind of practice. So today I'm gonna to walk through what I do to create one piece and try to do it um, Usually I can do it under an hour, outside of the time that it maybe takes to have like a layer dry if I need to. But just popping back in and out of the studio as the day goes on and work a little bit, in total I can finish something in about 45, 50 minutes. The trick is to not overthink it. I usually will go to some place like Pinterest, you can use any site you like to look for reference and images, and kind of quickly find something so you're not going down a rabbit hole for an hour trying to find that perfect image. Just find something you can work with and go. So we are gonna walk through my process and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to make this work. So I'm starting up today in Pinterest and I'm just gonna search right off the bat for dancer so I can do a full body work. And this piece right here, this is great, this will work. Looks like a fun one to do. And let's go with it. So my first step, of course, is to sketch out the work. So that I can work on my desk with my nice overhead shot and you can see what I'm doing. I have put the reference image on my geriatric iPad. Seriously, this thing is eight years old, nine years old, something like that. But yes, I'm gonna sketch it out doesn't have to be perfect, I just need to get the gesture and the proportions pretty close and feel good about it. Now I often do a pretty basic background because the background is not my main focus in this book. Uh, oftentimes it's just a color wash or something along those lines, maybe a gradient, whatever. But I kind of like all the variation of tones going on in the real soft background here, so I'm going to represent that a little bit more. Not a lot of detail, not a ton of perspective or anything, just, you know, give it a little bit more depth. Now when I start painting my figure, what I often do is start with a layer that is just outlining where the shadows are. And I just do this in a monochromatic wash, usually something that's going to be complementary to the skin tone. So maybe something in the blues or purples, you can even have a bit of a green tone depending on the tone of the skins and what you want to pull out and how much you want to highlight that. 
So once I've done my shadow layer and that's dried really well, so I don't make a mess of it, then I'll go over with a wash of skin tone, just leaving my highlights bare, but one wash of approximately the tone of the skin. And then once I do that, I'll go start working up layers of more intense color, more shadows, the tones of the dress and the hair, and just deciding how much detail I wanna add. Now I'd love to point out that October is an amazing month for trying to get a habit like this going because if you're somebody who needs prompts, there are so many available online. Uh, Inktober, if you have heard of this, is a hugely popular daily prompt list that exists in social media to help you create work every day and share it in a community. But it's even gone beyond that. There's a lot of artists that create their own prompt lists now. Um, so if you go onto Instagram and you look around, you're gonna find a ton of October daily drawing prompt lists and you can take part in any of them, either completely through the month, a few pieces here and there, or even jump around and do different lists as you like. But it's really nice to kind of have that sometimes. It's a sense of community working together on this project and just an idea, to spark an idea and try to come up with something, your own take on it. And then it's fun to see how everybody else came across that and uh, put their own spin on that topic. Once I feel pretty good about where the painting is, I often will go back in with uh, some other medium to kind of maybe draw out some pops of detail or highlights or things, just kind of playing around. I really like the idea of working a little bit multimedia. So uh, this is another area I'm experimenting in this book. So I might use my gel pen a white gel pen specifically to pull out some highlights and I have a few different sets of colored pencils. Some, uh, the one I'm using here are watercolor, water reactive pencils, but I also have some wax based ones and they have different levels of transparency and create different effects, but it's fun to either add in little punches of detail or sometimes I like to just do some doodling or some hatching to create some interesting effects and depth and textures. So it's fun to experiment with and play with. Okay, so I'm gonna call that piece done. It's kind of a satisfying little sketch. Nothing too crazy, but just always working, always practicing, always seeing what you can do. Every time you work, it's gonna get better. So as promised, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sketchbook tour of what I've been working on. Since I started doing this project, it hasn't been that long, but I'll show you what I got so far. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen quite a few of these posted. Love the texture in her hair. And I tried to capture that in a more abstract way. And she had all these amazing pieces of jewelry on. Um, wonderful reference photo from Pinterest. This was a fun one, a little bit more fashion. I'm trying to stylized manner, kind of try to capture the hair, but I think the best thing I did in this piece was probably her ear. That's okay. <laughs> this one's all right. Uh, I tried to push um, some of the perspectives of the face, make the eyes a little bit bigger. Yeah, looks a little alien-like, but you know, it's all right. Kind of had fun doing all the little hatchings on this piece. This one is Okay, I've never done like a hairstyle like that. So uh, trying out line work there, something's not right in the eyes, but it's okay. Still working every time. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones that I did. One of the first ones that I did in the sketchbook. Uh, just a really lovely profile portrait. I did a lot more ink work on the hair. Uh, very subtle color in the eyes, which was real pretty. 
So that might be my favorite piece so far. And then something a little bit more cartoony, stylized. So that's basically where I'm at. I haven't been at this project too long, but I have the book to fill. And I will probably go back because these pages are really nice and heavy and I'm gonna fill this side too. So I'm gonna keep going. My goal is one a day, but if I get two done a week, I'm gonna be pretty happy with that. And that's all right. You just gotta start with what you can. Keep going from there. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that it gave you some ideas and inspiration to try working at, at something, anything, whatever it is that is interesting to you or that you wanna to try to get better at or experiment with. It's a perfect way to do it. It's not a massive time commitment, but it's always working towards that end of doing better, being better, and just expanding your skill set. Thank you so much for joining me on my sketchbook tour and project. I hope that it helps. I hope that if this is beneficial to you, maybe share it with somebody else who you think is struggling tackling that blank page. See if we can't light a fire under everybody to do more creative, amazing work and get better. Subscribe if you would like. We are gonna do a lot more fun stuff, inspiring stuff, weird stuff, artistic stuff, and it's just a ride to see how things go and a space to share what we're doing. So I hope I will see you in the next video. Y'all take care, make things stay sane. I'll see you next time.